So I wanted to make an update video about ripping physical media, ripping Blu-rays to MKV files, and kind of optimize some of the process that I've described in my prior content. Through a variety of videos earlier in the channel or recently in the channel, I've kind of detailed concepts of ripping physical media, ripping movie content off of HD and 4K Blu-ray to set up on a local server that you might play uh, with a local uh, type of player, you know, Plex, Shield, Apple TV, Infuse, Zipiti, all of that. And I really tried to highlight some of the challenges and some of the pitfalls and, and shine, a, shine a strong light on the idea that it's, it's, it can be an involved process. Um, and when I started talking about it, I was talking about the idea I was talking about the idea of ripping to ISO files and managing content and playback that way, but the reality is there's so many virtues to MKV that even I kind of changed the, my process over and abandoned the idea of doing ISOs and sticking and, and transitioning over to MKVs. But in the, in the ripping processes that I described, I was actually still kind of doing an ISO step leading to creating the MKV from the ISO that I would make from the disc first. And there were some feedback uh, comments in those prior videos. It's like, kind of, why are you doing it this way? If your ultimate goal is MKV, you're basically taking extra time, you're doing extra steps. And I defended my original process a little bit just because historically I've been so ISO focused and the idea that, well, sometimes you have to do these things a bit iteratively to make sure that you have all of the right stuff off the disc. But long story short, I want to kind of correct the prior videos and say, now in my process, I have completely removed the use of ISO files and any DVD, and I've reduced my ripping software use and procedure to just sticking 100% to make MKV, getting the content directly off the disc using make MKV. I found it to be, I'll, I'll definitely admit, uh, following the feedback in the comments, it's just really a superior way to go about the process. So I'll show this in the tool itself, uh, the, the highlights of what I've changed and what I've optimized in my process and then reflect on a couple of the, the ideas behind it and the values and the benefits of doing it this way. All right, so here we are, Windows, desktop computer, run and make MKV. I'm gonna go ahead and throw a Blu-ray in. In this case, it's just Rocky 5, high definition, regular Blu-ray disc. So after Make MKB is done, it's kind of initial uh, interrogation of the disk, getting an idea of some of the copy protection and the disk information details. If you want to use Make MKB directly, you just hit this big button here in the middle to kind of do a full processing of now the actual playlists and contents and video streams and such that are on the disk itself. Usually this isn't too long. I'm kind of jumping ahead a little bit uh, just for the sake of expediency. And so once it's all done, we can see I have got my main playlist here. This is the Rocky V movie that's sitting on the disc. And in this case, I have my movie. I've got a variety of audio tracks. Um, I'm only ever concerned with the main one. I would take the highest quality, best English audio track and, and have that in my resultant rip. And then for the subtitles, we can see there's only one English track in this movie. And I will admit, there are far more movies where this is the case than not. There's a higher density of more involved subtitle processing when you get into science fiction, foreign films, anime, and stuff like that. But by and large, the bulk, the bulk of films uh, does come through pretty simple. And, and again, quite honestly, there's really very little reason to make an ISO of this, to then load the ISO, to rip the main movie. In this case, we're far better off just just using Make MKV directly, no extra tool, no extra fuss. And so what I would do here is click off the main English track. I'm only ever concerned with getting the forced subtitles in my resultant rip. And per my prior videos, I rename this forced part of the subtitle track as forced. And very important, I go to the MKV flags, which you can get to if you have Make MKV set in expert mode. It's currently set to a D for default. I add an F, which now makes it default and forced. And I would go ahead and click my Make MKV button and away the tool goes, taking just what I've selected off of the disc, ignoring everything else, 
quick, efficient, easy, and again, no real reason to bother making an ISO, uh, an extra step of making an ISO of this film, when my ultimate goal is not to have the ISO, but it's to have just the main movie, main movie MKV rip with its specific selections inside it. All right, since the last disc was rocky, I just wanna show what happens when you do encounter multiple subtitles, kind of using this method, or at least what I'm doing in response to it. So this is Rocky Balboa. I've inserted it already. Make MKV has done its initial, its initial pass uh, on the disc and its encryption and details information. Now I'm parsing the actual video file and audio structure of the disc itself so I can make my selections and then make the resulting MKV. So when that's done, I got a couple of extra things here. These are extras, specials, features, whatever. What I, what I care about is the main movie. Notice in this case, this one actually didn't have a name. So I always, I always name the main title in my rips after the movie so that I can, I can see that, find it. So I've selected the, I've got the main, uh, the main movie video stream selected. I did my rename. I, the highest quality audio available here is PCM 5.1. I've selected that. And I, again, always name my audio tracks accordingly. I've called this LPCM 5.1. But here we actually have two English subtitle tracks. From this perspective, looking at the disc, I don't know what's in these. I don't know what's contained in them. So in this case, I will do a two-step ripping process. I will first rip with all of these items selected. However many English subtitles are in, uh, in the stream on the disc is what I will take. I will rip these to my file locally. And then as I laid out in my other videos, I'll use a tool after I have this MKB called Subtitle Edit. So I did want to show this off a little bit more that the fact that basically MK, make MKV can help to kind of finalize the file with the multiple subtitles in it. So in this case, I've gone ahead and I ripped Rocky Balboa. I, call, I renamed this file here, Rocky Balboa Original. And if we take a look at it in media info, we can see that we have both our video stream, our audio stream, and two English subtitles. There were no forced subtitles in either of those tracks. So Make MKV gave us two independent, uh, two independent subtitle tracks for the two that were represented. I did go ahead and load those into Subtitle Edit, and here's what we're looking at. Basically, the first track has 1,328 subs in it. And if we kind of page through here, you can see the different things that are being said. And if we look at the second track, we've got 1,771, I'm sorry, 1,471 subtitles in here. The difference being this has the contextual information in it. But besides that aside, it's the same subtitles. So there's no subtitles in here that are forced in this movie, nothing that we need to retain, which means that, yes, I would in fact want to drop, drop the subtitles that are in that rip and not maintain them um, in my final file that I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna put on my server, the one that I'm gonna watch. The easiest way now, actually, to get rid of those subs is just to go back. So if I take that prior MKV file and I reopen it and make MKV, make MKV can remake an MKV out of an MKV. So here we can see the reduced file as it is. It retained my names, there's Rocky Balboa, there's my LPCM 5.1 audio track. And all I gotta do to throw these subtitles away is click them off and boom, rerun the make MKV process. Now, because I'm, I'm basically reading from disk on the computer, writing back to disk on the computer, I've got an SSD in this little Intel NUC. This process is gonna take all of a couple minutes and I have my resultant file. I don't need to touch the disk again. I only need to rip that main movie once and I can make a further reduction of it, MKV to MKV, right in this tool, right in the same piece of software, nothing else required. So simple, so easy, so much faster. So thanks so much for the folks that made the comments previously, basically kind of calling out a bit of the inefficiency in my process. This is so much better. I'm not making extra files, I'm not hitting a disk multiple times. I'm not ripping things off of a disc that I don't need 
and, and spending the time to do that. The longest part of this process is actually getting the copy of the information off the disk to the local hard drive. And by doing it this way, I'm only copying the, the bare minimum of what I would need and not the extra stuff, extra tracks, extra special features, extra audio, and, and all of that. So this works so much better. Again, essentially single tool uh, using Make MKV. Most of the time, you're going to have to do it all once with the, you hit the jackpot, bingo. When you open up a disc and you happen to see one English audio subtitle, you just take the forced ones. You might see two, you might see four, you might see six on some movies, but using this method, just take them off the disc one time, do your analysis, and then reuse Make MKV to just grab the final one that you're looking for. Just make sure to rename it forced or whatever you might like to call it. Put that F flag on it so that it comes out like it's supposed to. So this process also is better in a couple regards. One thing, two things that I'll say. Uh, one is that um, in, in my experience, disc read errors are pretty common. It doesn't take much, especially with a 4K disc, a blemish, a scratch, a scuff, all of that to make a disc essentially unreadable. And by doing the process this way, again, reading less of the contents of the disc, you're reducing the chance that you might have a read error. If that, if that scratch, if that scuff is in a section of the physical disc that doesn't uh, occupy or where, the, where the, the, the main movie itself doesn't occupy, you don't have to read it in a way that could cause a, a full error. So I'm pretty sure that I've had some disc read errors using NAD, any DVD ripping the entire disc that I, I could have avoided and still got the movie off of it actually in retrospect by just using Make MKV and only copying those parts. So that's much more efficient. The other thing I'll say a little bit anecdotally, but it really does seem to me that Make MKV is far superior in its uh, like read reliability. I don't know what they do differently than, than any DVD, uh, specifically in terms of like read and verify or read and retry if, if it is getting some kind of a read error or encountering some kind of difficulty with the disc. But I find Make, Make MKV will sit, it'll, it'll alert you to the fact that it might be having trouble reading a sector or, or accessing a part of a disc, but it's going to try, it's going to try, and a lot of the times it succeeds. And the, the resulting movie looks and plays, you know, completely stable and normal like you would expect it to. Any DVD, in my experience, kind of runs and spins and chunks away and, and fails, kind of fails more often than Make MKV does. So the less tools when you're doing something like this in general, the better. It's just less failure modes. You're reducing the opportunity for kind of something to go wrong or for an error or, or whatnot to occur. So yeah, so there's my, my optimized RIP process so much faster. I can run disks with, with less effort, less attention, and again, way more efficiently than I was doing before. Thanks for the folks commenting, kind of challenging my assertions. I think the remainder or the, the prior uh, MKV physical media ripping concept uh, uh, videos still have a lot of value. So please go do check those out if you're finding this one first. I talk in a lot more detail about the structure of a disc and how you identify the things that you need, the things that you're looking for off of it and, and all of that. Just ignore those parts about ripping to ISO first and do it this way when you actually are ready to, to pull the content and, and, and make your file at that step. So if you have more questions, post in the comments. I'm happy to answer. And again, kudos and thanks for the folks taking the time to provide the feedback that they did. Otherwise, please do all the regular YouTube stuff, like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications and all of that. Coming back for more content and thanks so much for watching.